when people look up, you know, you and your business support black colleges, clearly it's a huge success now. I mean, we see you uh, have a partnership with the NBA for the NBA game. Uh, in, in, what's that? 2K? Yeah, 2K and All-Star. Actually, and two All-Star. separate deals. Two separate deals. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, we see celebrities wearing your stuff. So before we get into that, this multi-million dollar business that you built, how old are you? I'm 29. And and, and you're not single anymore, right? Not got- anymore. Not, not technically. I'm technically you're single, single, but you're yeah. not single. Yeah, me and my mom had this conversation. Yeah, I'm I feel you. 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 Yeah, because mama say, well, you're single until you're married, baby. Exactly. exactly. But you know, in this generation, now nah, you single if, <laughs> if if you call me a woman. <laughs> okay. So, exactly. ladies, black man, very successful, wealthy, built a business, but stay out his DM because he Please. don't want you. I don't want no problems. No problems. I don't want no smoke. Okay. The he, no smoke. Because I, 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 seen, I seen this lady. She looked like she will give him <laughs> and you the smoke. <laughs> so, okay, 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 okay. So before we get into to, to, um, you know, the, the business side of things, because you're going to teach us some things today. Where did the passion come yeah. when it comes to support black colleges? Because like, yeah. I'm going to be real with you. I have some people watching this right now who are white. Mm-hmm. Saying, oh, black colleges. Why is everything got to be about black? Black, black, yeah. black. And I, I get that question asked all the time. Yeah. Uh, so I, I really want to break this down from an educational perspective. Yeah, where did your comp- where did your passion um, and drive for supporting black colleges, HBCUs, come from? Yeah. So for people who don't know, HBCUs were created when we couldn't go to the other schools. So it only was started because we couldn't go, not because we wanted to be different or stand out or whatever. It was because this was a white school, so we built our own institution so that we could go to school and learn. Yes, sir. So that's just the uh, that's the most simple, basic way to say that. Okay. Um, for me, my mom went to Howard, um, and I really didn't know what that meant. Okay. Uh, and one thing I love about my mom is she allowed me to make my own decisions all throughout my life. Mm. So she never, like, pushed it on me. If it was meant for me, I would go. If not... I wouldn't go. And so I got into uh, two or three schools, uh, Carolina, Duke, and Howard. I didn't really apply to a lot of schools. Wait, 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 wait. Carolina? Mm -hmm. Jordan? Yeah, Michael Jordan. Duke? That was my favorite school. Duke? And Howard? And Howard. Mm -hmm. But you was in Greensboro, and you skipped over A&T? It was too close. Too close to home. home. I I knew I wanted to get away. Um, Duke and Carolina were about an hour away. Absolutely. But Up in the Rod Dorm area. He was like 15 minutes. Like I, everybody wants to go to AT though. Every the Aggie Pride is it's serious. It's next level. And it was almost annoying. It almost turned me off. It's that prideful. For real. Yeah. Especially as a high school student who didn't know much. I'm like, why do they keep yelling Aggie Pride and wearing blue and gold? And all? It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, and Howard right now, you know, got uh, you know, the mother of all mothers over there now, the dean of students. We do. We we yeah. are, we I mean, the alumni are just next level. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole episode right there. But, that is, that is. You know, um, so what made you choose Howard over yeah. Duke, <laughs> over Carolina? Everybody always asks that. <laughs> you know what's funny? So I did something called the smile test. And that's when you go on campus. I did it too, bro. Yeah. So you know about the smile test. You just go along. You hey, smile. You smile. See how uh-huh. people respond to you. Yeah. At Duke, um, I didn't really get a response, you know. And, <laughs> And I, I saw, you got a response, <laughs> yeah, but not the response that you yeah, needed. I got to a get. response, which most of the time was no response, um, or like don't look me in my eyes, you know that kind of thing. Yeah. And also, I didn't see many many people that looked like me. Mm. Um, very few people that looked like me. Mm. And me going to a, a white, predominantly white high school. I graduated with a class of eighty eight kids. I went to a private school. Okay. And I was one of like five black kids that graduated in wow. my class. Wow. I didn't want that same experience. I, I knew that Duke would be similar. I really just applied because everybody else was applying at my school that, oh, we're going to Duke. I'm, I'm, I can apply there too. Okay. And then, um, so I went to Howard as well. And it's crazy because I, I never actually stepped foot on Howard's campus before I got there. Wow. Never went. I saw it when I was younger. Right. But like, you know, I, don't, I didn't remember that. Yeah. So I really knew I just didn't want to go to Carolina and Duke. So I chose a third option. I got you. And so when I, the first day I got on campus... It was crazy. I had I hadn't been to DC in a long time, mm-hmm. and it was just so many black people. Like, yes. our music was blasting. My favorite hip hop songs was on. Like people moving bins, just jamming. Everybody yeah. wearing the same colors and yeah. chanting stuff. I'm like, yo, this is where am I at? Like, right. I felt like I was like in a whole other world coming from Greensboro. Like, <laughs> I remember I don't see this often. 
<laughs> so my mom, my mom always says, man, your eyes are wide open. Wide man. open, yeah, bro. So I'm moving in, and then I, we go to the yard for like the first um, step show, pep rally, okay. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, step shows, talent shows. And I'm seeing all these beautiful black women. I'm like, man. Yes, sir. I'm like, man, you can leave, you can leave now. Right. <laughs> I'm good. good. I can tell she's a little worried about like, right. I'm, I'm good, I promise you. Right. So, um, you know, it, the passion came from, I, I only could imagine how many students don't know that exist. Okay. Like how many high school kids don't know that HBCs exist and then the magnitude of how they exist. We're not just there, right. we're excelling in all levels. Yes. And so, um, you know, I was like, man, I have to find a way to spread awareness about HBCs without it being like, oh, here's a college fair, or here's this, mm -hmm. like the typical stuff that's quote unquote boring. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I can do it through clothing. Mm -hmm. People love clothes. I know how to put some colors together. I'm like, okay, at designing. And I it all started with just a basic t-shirt that I wore that said support black colleges. Not even this logo. It was just wow. Just said support you black colleges. You just support yeah, that's it. Literally just words. And I wish I could find a shirt. I like never I need to figure out if I could find it, but it all started with that. And people were like, Oh, where'd you get that shirt? I'm like, Oh, I made it. Wow. Oh, where'd you get that? And so you know me. People, enough people ask. I'm like, oh, I'm about to make some work. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, about, yeah. I'm about to go to the to the local print shop because you know back then I didn't know what I was doing, so I was paying twenty dollars per shirt, which is completely idiotic. Crazy. But you know I didn't know, and um, it was around homecoming time where I really started the business, and the amount of people that asked and really wanted support was like, man, this is really needed, and people actually enjoy the brand. So this that's when we got more into like the actual this could be a business versus a hobby. That's so good. That's so good. Um, I've been following you for a while, and I know you didn't actually complete school. Yeah. Uh, because you went through a little journey. Yeah. Real quickly, so, uh, talk to us about that journey. Yeah, so um, my sophomore year of school, so mind you, just so I can set the scene for you, I'm like vice president of School of Business. Okay. I started an organization on campus. Yeah. I'm like super involved. Yeah. Um, I'm one of those students that knows all the staff. I, I'm the person that's best friends with the calf lady, the janitors, <laughs> the police. Because I understand the, the value of relationships. Yeah. And so I never paid for a meal plan. They always let me in for free. I never had to pay for events on campus. The, the cops always opened the side door for me. Like, that's yeah. the kind of relationships I had. Right. So one day, um, I'm swiping my card to get into the cafeteria. And the cafeteria lady's like, uh, your card didn't go through. And she's like, I'm going to let you through regardless. I know you'd be in here every day. But she's like, your card didn't go through. Just go check it out in the A building um, when, you, when you're done. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I go to the A building, and I'm like... You know, I tried to start my car in the calf and it didn't work. So they're like, oh, let me pull up your account. They pulled up my account and my account had been dropped. And so how are they used to do this thing called purging? Where like you're basically your account can get dropped without you knowing. Absolutely. And so um, I don't know whether I missed emails or uh, physical mail that went to my home address. I don't know how that ball got dropped, but essentially I didn't get approved for some grants and loans that I thought I was going to get approved for. Like that I should have gotten approved for. We right. qualified right, for it. Right. Um, so I turned, I didn't get, I, it was like a Pell Grant and something else. So just like that, like. You're done. I was out of school. Right. Just like that. They gave me like two weeks to get out of my dorm. They like, they were super like, you know, they, they worked Don't with me. me. Yeah. I was also the president of my dorm at the time. So they wasn't, I, I definitely stayed longer than I was supposed to. Okay. I, okay. That, that was relationships completely. After that, I started uh, staying with random friends in D.C., mm. and it just became something that was just too much for me. Like, I felt like I was a burden on people. I was sleeping on people's couches. I had to wait for people to get home before I can get it. Like, it was just a lot of, like, it was a lot. So um, eventually, I went back to North Carolina, um, and I set out my uh, sophomore year of college, and I wasn't able to come back because I owed $14,000. And so, um, you know, to me... When I first got home, I was extremely like just depressed, upset, sad. I went from being a man on campus to literally just being out like in a week. Like yeah, yeah. my I didn't even know what to do. Like, what am I supposed to even do? And you know, when you're younger, you just you think your life is over. Yeah. Uh, so I was kind of just panicking. But um, what I did realize was that I'm like, you know what? At the time I had like four thousand followers on Twitter. This is when I was using Twitter a lot. And and Facebook, my Facebook was pretty um highly engaged. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, you know what? If I could get everybody to give me $4, I can get back to school. Like, that's how I thought about it. I, I was like, everybody's going to give me $4, I'll get back to school. And it was literally, that was the most simple thought. Mm. So I got online. I was like, how do I make a website? How do I, I went on YouTube, figured out how to like collect money. Because GoFundMe wasn't a thing at this time. Mm -hmm. I found this company called Fundraiser. And it was spelled like F-N-D-R-Z-R, -R, something like that. <laughs> so I used that. I, I embedded the code onto my website that I made off, off of 
God knows what platform I use. Mm. I don't even remember. And I made this video on my phone and I just said, hey, my name's Corey Arvinger. Like, if you could spend $4 on McDonald's, if you could spend $4 on Starbucks, you could spend $4 on education. That was the exact, that was my exact wording. And I ran with that um, and started this campaign. So I remember my, my first, the first person who donated, her name was Maxine Chapman. I'll never forget because it was a girl that was, went to my school and I'm like, yo, somebody really gave me money for school. Like somebody <laughs> who might be struggling with tuition themselves right. gave me $4. And as soon as I got that money, I knew that I had to complete it to the end. Wow. And so uh, it really motivated me to start going hard on the campaign. Yeah. And um, eventually the campaign got picked up by MTV. They yep. wanted to do an um, a online, just talk about it. Um, that did well. So then they ended up inviting me to D.C. to film live or to film, not live, but film an um, a episode on this thing they, they had called Random Acts of Kindness. OK. Which I didn't know at the time that's what it was called because I, I wasn't supposed to know. But they're like, yeah, we just want to tell your story some more. Um, I got interviewed by Sway Calloway. So oh, was, Sway, that's was, what's up. It was hella cool. We walked around campus. We talked and all of that. Towards the end of the interview, he's like, all right, we're going to go in this room. It's going to be the last part, and you'll go home. And then, you know, we'll try to raise you some more money. Cool. I was blessed to even be there. Right, right. Um, so I walk into the room, and everybody's like, surprise. And, I'm whoa, like, whoa, whoa. and I told mom, this is so funny. I told mom the first thing I thought was that I want a car. <laughs> like, like, why I thought you that? Want, I you walked no into a, 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 a <laughs> classroom on college thinking you want a car. Yeah, I, seriously. I'm like, yo, what a car in the world. I don't know why. <laughs> like, I don't know why I thought that. But just it's just me being a, a teenager. So I thought I wanted a car. I didn't. Um, and then they're like, welcome back, Corey. And that's all my friends. And my mom was there who wasn't with me in D.C. Mm. I remember her dropping me off at the airport. All right, I'll see you in a few days. And literally saw me the next day filming. Um, so they flew her out. I didn't know all of this. And then they had a check. It was a big check. And it said $12,000, right? Wow. So at this point, I had raised 8000 myself. Okay. 8000 in a few months. I was like, I'm doing pretty good. Right. They gave me twelve, And then this company called Salt. And MTV, who partnered with Howard, matched it okay. for $12,000. So I ended up getting $24,000, and it brought my total to $32,000. Wow. So um, I ended up getting the money. But you still didn't finish school? Yep. So I ended up, and <laughs> yeah, the story gets better. Ended up going back to what? school, right? So I paid my back balance off, obviously. Okay. And I paid, you know. Forward. Forward. And so Howard is like anywhere from twenty four to 40000 40, a year. Yeah, yeah. So I know. Know, that money wasn't going to last forever, which I knew. And so the lady who is over the um, admissions and students, I was like, yo, how do I make sure I don't get in this position again? Because yeah. I got the grades, like I'm doing well, like I'm involved. And she was like, I'll make sure you're never in this position again. Mm. I'll make sure you're never in it. We're going to make take care of the finances. I'm like, cool, we're good to go. Y'all saw how much I did. I, I, I want to get back. I was willing to do it myself, right. but you all helped. Cool. The next year, which would have been, been my junior year, she actually ended up leaving the school. And that was my safety net for you know my finances and when it was time for my my junior year i paid up i paid all of that it was time for me to go back for my senior year i didn't have the money to go back to school oh. and so i try i was talking to people like so and so said this right. i'm like yo i showed them the MC, like this is what i did before and they weren't really budgeting oh we don't have to budget da, 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 da. and i'm like i'm not doing that again yeah, absolutely. because at this point you're just basically telling me you don't want me here. Yeah, yeah, and you're not. You don't think that I'm a student that's valuable enough to, you know, finish school on on y'all's dime. Like I, my grades are fine. Right. I started this. I did this. I do this. I do this. I can name you almost every staff person outside of this one building. Wow. And I was pulling on a lot of contacts, and they were trying to help. And I was getting a little money here and there, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't forty thousand dollars. You know, so I ended up um, just stopping and working. I was like, I'm gonna stack my bread, and I'll just come back when I get my own money. Mm. That's what I started doing. But because I started stacking my own money and found Made what I was money. good at, I was like, I can't go back. <laughs> so that's why I never finished school. <laughs>